Oh, wait, I need to change two things. Hats off to you, Faye, you are my hero. Today's video is a quick start guide to using Cursor, the killer new software that allows anybody to code. By the end of this video, you're gonna know exactly how to build an app just like Faye built. But that's not all, I also wanna show you how to get it online, and I wanna show you how some indie hackers are making big bucks building simple tools just like this. Here's what we're gonna cover today, I'm gonna show you exactly how to install this software, I'm gonna give you a quick overview, not in depth, but enough to really get you going. Then we're gonna build an app just like Faye built, and then we're gonna deploy it using Replit. From there, I'm gonna show you exactly how to go even further with this stuff, introduce you to this guy, Peter Levels, who is making tons of money building these very simple apps, and give you some business use case ideas and more. So the first thing you need to do is head on over to cursor.com and download it. This is free software, so that's how you download it. It's very easy to install. There's just a couple quick screens that you've gotta click through. And you should be presented with a workspace that looks something like this. We'll open a folder. It's probably good to have a new folder for any project that you're working on. And now we've got this workspace. The couple things you need to find here is these little buttons up here are killer. The top right, this is where you need to go. You need to turn on your terminal, which is down here. And this little button right here on the top right is the AI pane. And this is where we're gonna do a lot of our work right here, just sending prompts to the AI. You can see here, you can select which AI you use to start building your code. So I'm just gonna say, please create a simple web page with the words Harry Potter on it. And this has given us the code, it's explained a little bit about the code and it's told us exactly what to do with the code here. So I'm just gonna follow its instructions and I'm gonna create a new file. So this is the folder that we're in. I'm gonna copy and paste this title of this file. Copy, new file, I'm gonna paste that name in there. There we are, we're now in the file and we can apply this code directly to this file by clicking apply, continue, and accept. That's all we've gotta do. Now let's say, hey, I wanna see this on my computer. And it's telling me, hey, you can just open that HTML file that you've created, which is possible, but what I really wanna do is run a little local server here. And it's giving me the instructions here for exactly how to do that. And if you need more instructions, you can just ask it. But it's basically telling you to find the location, and we're already in that location right here. It may be helpful to learn just a little bit about the terminal, but you can just follow these instructions. We don't even need that because we are in this demo folder. And now we're gonna run this command. On my computer, anytime I use these Python commands, I need to put in Python 3. I'm looking into how to fix that, but anytime it tells me to run Python, I just have to say Python 3. There it is. And now we can just copy this into Chrome. One thing I forgot to do is save this file. So, control save. Now let's see if we got it. Refresh, there we go. Our Harry Potter page there. So that's one thing to note. When we add those changes, you'll see a little white dot appear up here. That means it hasn't been saved. All you gotta do is just Command S, the same way you save any document. You can do that up in the file as well. Before we move on, I just wanna say if you're new to the Blazing Zebra channel, I wanna welcome you and thank you for joining me on my mission of helping anybody I can learn how to use these new powerful AI tools. I support this channel via Patreon. I've got cheat sheets and coaching options in there, so if you're getting something out of these videos, please check out my Patreon. I'm jumping right into the cheat sheet here. This is the killer prompt that took me many attempts to create, and this is going to help us build an app just like Faye did at the very beginning of this video. And what I think is really special about these types of apps is not only are we using AI to create them, but we're also using AI as the core of the back end to do a lot of the heavy lifting so we don't have to write a ton of code because the AI is doing a lot of stuff in the background. So I'm not gonna read through this prompt, but it'll basically help us create a chat bot in the character of Harry Potter right here. But like I said, at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you a lot of different ways to manipulate this to create business use cases that can be very useful either for you or maybe to launch to the world. Let's throw this into cursor and see what we can get. So I've cleared out all of my files here and started a new chat. This little plus button gives you a new chat and I'm gonna drop this prompt right in here. Awesome, so not only did it create all the code that we needed here, these two files, but it also told us exactly what we need to do next to get this up and running. 
So if you scroll past the code, it tells you to add a main Python file called main.py. So I'm just gonna copy and paste that file name right into here. It's gonna pull this up and then I'm gonna go up. This is the main.py. I'm just applying this to the file right here, accepting it and clicking save. Next, I'm gonna create this index.html file. I'm gonna apply this. This is the code we need for that. Accept. Now we have our two files. Now it tells us we need to install this package. So we copy this right down here into our terminal. And it has said, hey, we can't find pip. This is a software that helps us install packages. So let's see what this does. You're gonna run into this. So I figured I'd show you how to fix it. Just drop that in there. Gives you this one, pip3. There we go, now we're off to the races here. You may run into different issues like that, but you just toss it right here into the chat. Now that's been installed. This is also important, you may need to install Homebrew as well. There are a lot of tutorials that can help with that. I'll link to the one I've created now. But again, Cursor's gonna walk you through all that stuff. So now that we've got Flask installed here, we've followed this direction. Now we need to just run this command, which gives us our Anthropic API key. To get that, you just gotta go to Anthropic's console here, get API keys, create a key. I'm gonna call this a burner because I'm gonna destroy it right after this video. I'm gonna copy that in. I'm just replacing where it says your API key here with the API key that I just created, the burner API key. And now we need to just run this application. Again, for me, I need to put Python 3 in there. And now it says you'll be able to access it right here on this URL. So I'm copying and pasting this right into Chrome. One thing I forgot, I gotta create a folder here. Index needs to go into a folder named templates. Moving that in, move. Now let's refresh. There we go. Chat with Harry Potter. Here's where we type our message. Give it a second, it's hitting the Anthropic API. And there we are, hello, how can I help you today? Awesome. So now let me show you how to get this online using Replit. I'm back in cursor now. I'm gonna do this little control C, we'll stop running because this program is running right now on our local machine. We can't send that URL over to our friends, they're not gonna be able to access it. We need to get it onto a server and there's a quick way to do that with Replit, that's what I'm gonna show you next. But for now we gotta shut this off by using control or that little up sign and C. And now we have shut that off. Now in order to get this online, we're gonna use this next prompt. Please make any adjustments that we need to easily deploy this on Replit, including creating a requirements file and any adjustments that might be needed to the Replit file. Again, you don't need to really know what this means just to get going and to get something working, but you can always use the AI to explain exactly what's going on. So I'm dropping that prompt right into the text string here. And this has told us exactly how to adjust it. We're gonna accept these, we're gonna apply these, accept, we're gonna save that file. This is our requirements file, show you exactly what to do with that. And there's gonna need some adjustments to this replit file. I'll show you exactly what to do with that, but cursor tells you exactly what to do anyway. I'm a little concerned that it hasn't adjusted anything in our index.html file, so I've um, highlighted that here. I'm just gonna ask it to double check, are there any adjustments needed to our index.html file? It's doing a little bit of this, a little bit of that. It's explaining what it did, and we're just going to apply, accept, and save. All right. Now we're heading on over to replit.com, R-E-P-L-I-T.com. Uh, I believe you can do all of this for free. We're gonna create a ripple. We're gonna choose Flask. We're gonna create this. Actually gonna change this name to Harry Potter. And it is building this now. And you can see we've got this main.py. And this looks very similar to the um, cursor uh, windows. So now you can upload those files that we've created or you can copy and paste them right in. I'm grabbing everything in this main.py, all, copy, paste. Now I'm creating a new folder, templates. Inside that I'm adding a file, index.html. This is the same exact format as we had on cursor or on our local machine, I should say. I'm gonna copy and paste everything from this into here. Now let's scroll back up and see what else we need. Uh-huh, this requirements.txt file. So I'm gonna copy and paste this. We need to put this into a new file. 
So we're going to create a new file, clicking that, call it requirements.txt, enter, and then we're going to paste what it told us to paste right in here. These, we're just adding those packages the same way we did with that pip command earlier. So that's done. And then the .replit file. So I'm going to copy all of this and go to this replit file. I'm going to paste this in. And there's one last thing we need to do here. We need to add that Anthropic API key so it can hit our uh, API. And this, it tells you exactly how to do that here. You go to the secrets and you add the Anthropic API key in there. So I'm going to copy this, going into Replit, going down here to Secrets, New Secret, Anthropic API key, dropping that in here, adding that secret. Now the moment of truth, we'll probably get an error here. We almost always do that we got to fix something, but we're going to run it. And there we had it. There was just a couple little things we needed to tweak here in the Replit file and connecting its external port to the right place. And now we have this here which is awesome because we are very close now to deploying this on the internet. So all you gotta do is click this deploy button. And if you've watched my other videos, you know you just click through these and give it a second. And there it is, it has been deployed. Now we can go here and you can send this link to anybody in the world and they can interact with your app. Now you might be saying to yourself, well, that's great, you know, that's kind of cool and it's a fun exercise, but it really isn't going to help me in the long run of my business or my professional life. And that's where I would say you might be wrong because there is a ton you can do with this stuff. Here's a guy, Peter Levels. He is currently making $3 million a year, creating all sorts of simple little apps. In fact, some of his most successful ones are basically just image generation apps that are running through some, you know, back-end software. A little more complex than what we've done here, but what we've done is shown you how to use Cursor to build those types of apps. And he really talks about his success being related to rapid prototyping and shipping things really quickly. So he creates tons of little apps all the time. And, you know, he says five out of a hundred are successful. That's how he gets to these large revenue amounts. And he embraces simplicity. And he's got this book called readmake.com. Com. That's the website. The book is called Make, and I highly recommend this. This is a blueprint for exactly how to take the skills that you just learned and learn how to experiment and put these different things online and test uh, these things out there. That's a lot of what the future of this channel is going to be dedicated to. So if you haven't subscribed, make sure to do that. In my next video, I'm going to be talking a lot about how to make sure your ideas have a product market fit, how there are, make sure that there are buyers for these simple little apps out there. But before we wrap up, I want to show you just a couple other ideas I had for things that you can adjust with this prompt. So these are all sorts of different ways that you can adjust that prompt to instead of talk like Harry Potter, create a legal document analyzer, create an interview question generator. The cheat sheet has a ton of these different ideas here that you can just swap these into that prompt I showed you and build uh, professional tools that a lot of people might be interested in. Also in the cheat sheet, I've got a couple custom GPTs that will walk you through exactly how to get started with Cursor. This is basically my video put into an interactive coach. Let me show you how this works. Okay, so I've fired up this one. This is my AI coding quick start one. Just gonna click these little headphones and let's see what we can do here. Hey, can you walk me through exercise number one, please? Sure thing. Let's start with getting Cursor AI set up on your computer. First, you'll need to download Cursor AI. Head to their official website, find the download link for your operating system, like Windows or Mac OS, and grab the installer. That's awesome, I've already got it set up. Can we jump into just working on a cool exercise? You got any ideas for me? Let's, let's dive into something interesting. How about we work on creating a task efficiency calculator? This is a cool and practical feature for a task management app. Here's the plan. Awesome. And there you go. You can just interact with those different cursor quick start tutors. I have two of them that I've built in here. They both excel at different things. So if you're serious about this, jump into the Patreon, grab the cheat sheet and start interacting with these different coaches. Thanks so much for watching this video. Again, I really appreciate you checking my stuff out. If you're getting something out of these videos, please consider supporting me on Patreon. There's a link in the description where you can access this cheat sheet and over 90 other cheat sheets 
instantly by joining Patreon. There's also some uh, coaching options in there as well. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. We're gonna be doing a lot of really cool stuff just like this, learning how to connect our apps to the world and you know generate some income with them. So make sure to subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you on the next video. Make your dreams come true.